Again, it's been a few days on our uh, Florida A&M Rattlers. So we got in a little Total Extreme Wrestling earlier this week. And going to get the stream up live and running here. Make sure we've got everybody made aware. Looks like we're live uh, according to Twitch. So we will just take a look around uh, as, you know, as we get the notice out let people trickle in here before we get really going into the save so we are on june 5th we're just starting into what should be our fifth year here with florida a and m is that our fifth year is that right yeah because hinton was a recruit we brought in so this is year number five uh this will be the start of the recruiting so uh today's episode uh today's stream will just be our recruiting take you all the way up to the first game of the fifth season now anybody that was here last time that can see our dashboard here we get great news right out of the gate Craig Montgomery although he's very very upset with everybody did not choose to transfer out so that is awesome uh, unfortunately our our freshman small forward did transfer out so now we're left with no small forwards on the roster we will probably get compensated for that with some type of walk-on uh, obviously the good news we've still got eric griffin uh villarreal our transfer is eligible this year we've still got montgomery and we brought in khalid knox who i fully expect to be just as good as montgomery was last year uh, and hopefully he doesn't get quite as grumpy. Hopefully we can do something this season. I don't know if it's winning games or what, but hopefully we can get something done to get Montgomery back on board and you know keep Knox in the keep Knox around. Griffin is also not too happy with me, but he's got a decent relationship with the team, so that should be all right. All these players, you can see everybody's upset, and I really think that's just because uh, we had such a bad record last year. What's up, Tribe Warpath? Uh, glad you can make it back. But yeah, everybody's in a bad mood, and it's because most of them, like, uh, just hate me. <laughs> and I'm I'm hoping that's record. I'm hoping that you know as we move forward, and this season is going to go better than last for certain. Uh, and hopefully that'll be enough to get some of these guys on board. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it here. All right, so we're taking a look again. We'll still get some walk-ons, but these are our scholarship guys. Looks like we got one, two seniors, and they're both power forwards. So next year, we'll still have two power forwards. We'll have three point guards. And again, this is all dependent on nobody leaving. Three shooting guards. Obviously, whatever scholarships we have, we need to get at least a couple of small forwards in here. Uh, and if we have anything left over, maybe another center. So, let us... Oh, uh, we got to get past the transfers. Sorry. Got to get past the transfers. Oh, we don't want to look at that. Advance. So we did have one scholarship available for transfers, and that was because we had the one small forward transfer out. I think I just skipped the first step in this. We can't take a look at the transfers. You know, last year we got Villarreal. He was, uh, well, at least, you know, he's, he's got a good ranking. Uh, he's got a good ranking. Hopefully that works out for us. So let's at least see what these transfers look like. Can we filter? Let's do the same thing we did before. See if there's anybody with like points per game, not so hot on minutes, that might be poised to jump up. Nothing sticking out. Maybe here. It's a shooting guard. Let's see. I wish... Is there not a filter on this screen? If anybody in chat knows, I'd like to find a filter on here so I could just see small forwards. I could always rank, um, sort it over here on the left by position, but then I don't get any kind of like real good side-by-side -side comparison on these numbers. Uh, that's why I prefer to, to do it by the stat and scroll through and try to pick it up, but if I can't filter by position, and I guess we can try to eyeball here I guess the small forward start in right about here all right so D 
decent ish kind of is it I think it is still ranked by points per game isn't it it is all right so at least it's still ranked we can kind of get a a halfway decent comparison here I mean it's I don't see anything that's jumping out anything jumping out to anybody there in chat I would love to find something that excited me about any of this. Where are these guys leaving? 24. Let's check out this guy. Tyus Green. It's contact. Yeah, let's go ahead and offer a scholarship too. What the heck? We got one to burn. Um... You never know. Last one worked out pretty good for us. I mean, he's he's averaging was that about a point every two minutes of playing time. So I mean, that, that's not bad. You know, that's against again the stats there are, are going to matter a little bit more than they would for a high schooler because obviously we're not looking at high schoolers anymore. We're we're looking at uh, college guys. Let's go in and see if he's still available. So I don't know. Yeah, it still saved our sort. And it looks like he went elsewhere, right? No, it didn't save our entire sort, I don't think. What if we do it back to back? Again, the transfer market, like for this hasn't traditionally really been my strong point all right I think he committed somewhere else so we are gonna skip transfers I don't have any patience for transfers I really don't it's super annoying to me let's just get past it let's get our traditional recruiting going so we'll have to skip through six, seven more transfer sessions. I think there's, I get confused, there's either eight or 12. Or something totally different that I'm going to be way off. All right, so let's see what we get. Move it on through here. We'll get our summer travel lined up. And uh, then we'll get moving. We'll check out see how some of these camps are going i'm really excited though to see how this works out once we get into the season to be quite honest i know we're probably not going to hit that tonight uh, i'll try to get it in the next couple of days but i think this is going to be an excellent season what we should see tonight is what kind of schedule our ad puts together for us so um you know i don't always do it but we might actually give the athletic director a call here in a minute and see if he won't schedule us some some gimmies at home. <laughs> we could always ask. Uh, uh, I've asked for that before and gotten back absolutely brutal road schedules. So no guarantees there, but we can give it a shot. This processing time is going to start getting a lot faster too. I can promise you that. I just ordered a new PC today. Should be in next week. Uh, it's going to be a significant difference. <laughs> Now look at how much the ratings changed there. Mike Stewart jumped up like crazy. I'm still starting Griffin, I guarantee you that. Khalid Knox got up to two stars. Montgomery stayed at two. Villarreal dropped down a little. I don't trust that rating. Well, we are playing Eric Griffin when it when it comes to that. All right, deleting all of that nonsense. Let's get our summer travel worked out. So we don't have that much money. We're just gonna hit Memphis. Hold on, how many, how many scholarships do I have? Two or three? It's not gonna show me if I go to recruit player. What if I go to school info? I think it shows it somewhere. Oh, it would probably showed it in the email I just deleted actually. Hmm. Let's just go to Memphis. And Georgia, what the heck? We're not hitting anybody out of state anyway. But if somebody does well at the Georgia camp, I'd like to know about it. So that's gonna cost us six thousand. We'll still have eighteen thousand. That'll be more than enough, I'm sure. Even if we have four scholarships, we got more than enough there. So 
not going to worry about that one. So now we're going to be on to June 26th and we get to populate our list. Of course, our, our prestige is still terrible. Our coach is getting better. Uh, so our head coaching attributes are really going to start to make a difference here soon. But for now, uh, we're still going to stay just within the state of Florida because we are starting to get a little bit more consistent, you know, picking up uh, the past two years, we've gotten one of our main targets. And then, you know, uh, as I've said the whole time, these guys outside of those main targets, you're just taking a shot in uh, their lottery tickets. And we've hit on one of them in Eric Griffin. So if we get lucky again, you know, we'll be up to five or six, uh, five or six real legit players there. Oh man, Gonzaga, the you know the runner up so many times, getting to the Final Four. Now they're losing two guys in the top ten of the draft, so their little run. Uh, I don't want to say their run's over. They always recruit well, but they lost a couple of pretty good players. Let us call this AD real quick. See if we can't get something worked out as far as schedule goes. Lots of cupcakes at home. We'll see if that works, hopefully. Uh, anything's better than last year's schedule. Last year was brutal. I think we had like 9 out of 13 out-of-conference games. We're all on the road. So, June 26th here. Let us get out and see what kind of prospects we've got. So, we're in Florida. We need to get the full recruit list. We do have three scholarships open. So, I would really like for two of those to be small forwards and the other one... Could probably be a center. Uh, I think we'll still have like six guards on scholarship, so probably a big man. But, as always, we're going to fill the list up with everybody that's going to qualify and could realistically consider us, maybe. So, we'll throw some of these guys up here toward the top. These two I'm not even going to touch. Uh, once we get down here to Lang, we'll go ahead and try them once. I'm not going to be pushy about it. Here is a small forward Juco that's pretty highly ranked. So we will go ahead and throw him on the list as well. Uh, this one's not as highly ranked, and I'm not going to get as much feedback on him. So I'll pass. Uh, same with those two, I guess. Uh, you know what? Let's throw them on the list. We usually don't fill our list up. If we happen to fill our list up, we can come back and take some of those off. Uh, sorry, we do not want that one. Or this one. We didn't want the guards. Just a small forward. And Matic can come off. And back to adding, guys. So, 2.9. He'll make it. He'll make it. He'll make it. We don't want a Juco point guard. Here we get our first. Is that our first one? <laughs> so, our first interest all the way down at 529. Yikes, there's a Juco small forward, so we'll throw him in, skipping the 2.1. So we're on the 2.8. 2.3 with interest, I'll go for it. 2.3 with interest. Just filling it up here, guys. We're not going out of state, so we don't have to be picky. We'll take them all the way down until we're full. 2-4 with interest is fine by me. Even the 2-1 with interest. I'm going to throw them on there, and I'm going to try to remember not to take them off and see if my little theory about guys with interest tending to, um, tending to hit their scores, see if that holds true or not. All right, so I believe Day was the one I just had to remove. Get back to adding. Adam. Nope, we're full. All right, that's fine. We just lost out on like the top or the bottom three or four, so not too worried about that. We definitely want to hit these small forwards very hard. So let us start here with watching some film, bringing some guys in, and then we'll call some of the ones that have a little bit of interest. We're not going to bother calling these guys. They'll just hang up on us, or maybe we can beg them for five minutes, but until our coach gets a little bit better look at this we unlocked five so uh you know every year prior 
we would try to do a little bit of recruiting and they'd hang up on us almost instantly and now we just want like five categories with one player and now he hangs up on us immediately so we will have to see which one was the anomaly so we're getting a little better uh, it's at least worth it to make calls now before it wasn't worth it at all they just hang up on me and it would be you know pretty frustrating for me I uh, didn't want to waste my time with it but now you know that wasn't so bad you know I can handle that making those calls so let's see if uh, any of these you know kind of long shot guys had a decent visit I mean if they had a decent visit and we can get in uh, start making some things happen that's awesome look at that they both two top hundred prospects and both of us uh, both of them are are warming up to us a little bit so you know I told you guys it was a long haul I told you it was a long grind and uh, I told you when Knox committed last year uh, that was the beginning of the turnaround the beginning you know we're at the top of the hill and now things are going to start to get a little bit easier as we start to come down so and again I, I don't know if this is just luck or if that's because our head coach's recruiting's got a little bit better i know that you know the the head coach recruiting ability and the assistant coach recruiting ability they they apply at different times and i don't know the exact you know behind the scenes formula or whatever so i can't speak to it but i've got to think that our coach getting better at recruiting is playing some part in that uh, let's jump over and get film on as many of the centers as we can why did i have him on did i is that a guy that jumped up in ranking or did i accidentally add him to the list i mean a top 20 prospect is not coming here but what the heck we can have him in for a visit right uh let's see Oh, it's because it's still on the full recruit list. That's right. What's up, Agalia? That looks more like my list. Let's make sure these small forwards that I invited in. Yeah, they're still on here. Cool. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's give this guy a call. Start unlocking some things with the centers. Come on. Talk to me. We're almost. We're almost to the point where these calls aren't infuriating. Maybe I have spoke too soon again. Certainly a problem last year when I started thinking things weren't going to be all that bad. Guys, talk to me. Tell me what you want to hear. All right, that's enough of the phone calls for now. Hey, Galia, how's your save going, buddy? Let's get these summer camps going. I'm really interested to see if any of these guys on our list um, do well in this Georgia Superstar camp. So we got six of them that attended. Let's see how they did. Didn't stand out. Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, none of them have been looking good yet. None of them stood out. None of the six stood out at Georgia. So, nothing great there. And again, that's just one of those things. I kind of, I kind of tend to believe that. Uh, what's up, Webstar? Wow, you got the national championship with Colorado. How long were you actually there? Is Colorado is not where you started that save, is it? Just curious, uh, how many years you were there before? You actually won. 
Oh, nice. Man, having those five-star freshmen that don't declare is always such a bonus. You know, in our online league, I'm really crossing my fingers that I can get somebody to stick around for me. Otherwise, next year is going to be a rebuilding year for Louisville uh, in the online league, probably. We'll see. We can still hit on some recruits this year. But, uh, you know, I actually had in a solo save, I had a guy that was a five-star as a freshman, and he ended up sticking around all the way to he was a senior, and he was awesome. He was on the Norton watch list every year. Uh, I don't think he ever won it. He came close his senior year. I think he was like one of those player of the year things his senior year. All right, so we didn't have – all right, so you're at Binghamton for seven or eight years, Colorado for four or five. That's quick to win one in four or five years, man. It's tough to win a national championship at a Blue Blood school in four or five years, so to completely rebuild it that quick is awesome. Let's get some of these centers in. Can scout you live. See if we can unlock a few more categories here. Come on, give me the last one. Thank you. Get some more film on these centers. Jump back over and check out our small forwards so we can get a couple more of these guys scouted live. And we can burn up some phone time on these guys as well. See what they're interested in. No, nope, he doesn't want to talk. Come on, talk to me, Joseph. Come on, buddy. Do you want to know about location? I'm not talking about bribes, that's for sure. Do we get nickel unlocked all the way? No, we don't have anything on nickel. What do you want to hear about, man? Playing at home. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's why I was saying, man, I think Colorado, uh, that was, if you've been following along, that was one of the schools that I'd said, like, I think it would be cool to take over Colorado. I've done Georgia before. That would be cool. Uh, Nebraska was one that I threw out. Uh, so Colorado was definitely on my short list of interesting schools to take over. So uh, now that you've already done it, I don't know if it would be as cool to, uh, I don't think I want to go and do it. Oh, that's a huge upgrade in facilities. That's awesome. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to get a couple more of these summer camps here. That uh, should have been the Great Plains camp, I believe. And now we'll get Midwest today. Then we should have a dead period. Oh, that's awesome you actually went there. Yeah, I mean, I went to Louisville as well so um that's where this comes from so it's always cool to be able to get your alma mater and you know hoist that trophy right uh we already got our recruiting actions picked out we're going to go into the dead period so we don't need to go do anything until after this dead period's over Didn't like it, cool visit, and appreciates it. So I think we turned one there. Uh, the dead period, I'm not going to bother. Uh, all I could really do is phone calls, and the phone calls are annoying. And I don't have all that much interest to unlock, so we'll get it next time. Let's just skip it. All right, and actually, I'm going to skip so we get the feedback on this camp as well before I go and do my actions for this week. All right, so let's see how these guys did at Memphis. Poorly. Not a whole lot of talent in the state of Florida. There's John Hill. He was decent. John Scott was decent. Ron McKenzie. And there we go, Kenneth DeGray in the top 25. 
So that's pretty nice. All right. Let's go and take a look at these guys. All right, guys. I'll catch you next time, buddy. Hey, make sure to get the rest of this. Uh, at least, even if you don't get the rest of this episode, make sure you catch us next time. This is going to be a big season for the Florida a m Rattlers. The gray was the one, right? Top 25. Yeah, even though I wasn't really particularly interested in a shooting guard this time around, uh, we're going to go ahead and host him and see if we can't generate a little bit of interest. Uh, because, you know, I really need small forwards, but he can slide over. All right, so these guys, he didn't stand out at Memphis. He didn't stand out at Memphis. And Stewart, the Juco, who's highly rated, you know, we don't get any feedback on him. So I would like to just transition straight over to him, but he has no interest even after the campus visit. Hmm. What to do at small forward? You know, I think uh, traditionally I'm going to put a little bit more weight on those camps but you know uh these guys are highly rated if we could pull them in to florida a and m you know they'll still be difference makers i think so we'll keep at them you know it wouldn't be my first choice but look this guy's actually warm where's he at i wonder if we're in his top 10 yet Come on, man. Are you interested or not? We're not in the mix yet. All right, so we're not in this top 10 yet, but uh, doesn't mean we won't get there. We're warm. I'll take it. I'll take whatever I can get. Let's go scout him live. So for now, I guess, really, these are our top two targets at small forward. I mean, they got to be better than these guys, right? Uh, I would really like to bring this Juco in. How's this one? Points are a little bit less, a little bit better assists, a little bit better rebounds, a lot better on blocks, and steals. Uh, let's also give him a go. So maybe we could bring in one of these two, bring in Nickel, and then uh, we still we got to see what happens with that shooting guard. That would be a big one. I don't want to extend the region. I haven't looked at internationals yet. That's a good point. The problem with internationals, though, is like if I bring them in for a campus visit or if I go visit them, that's two thousand a pop. So like one campus visit and one in-home visit, and that's half my budget. Um, and I don't, I mean, I could offer a ton of playing time if I could find somebody that was really into playing time. Let me think about it. Let's take a look at power forward though. That's, uh, you know, another good, another good option is to slide one down. If we had somebody with a little bit of interest let's jump over here and check out what's going on with sinners scout him live uh let's get some film on these power forwards oh shoot we already got film on all the small forwards just now Let's see. Uh, do we have... No, we're bringing him in for a visit. It's small forward. We're watching film again because we got such a better evaluation on Lang than Fuller. Uh, but after this week is over, I'm going to take another look at those evaluations. And we're going to offer one of those two four-star small forwards. And then we'll take another look at if we like Nickel or the, the shooting guard. Or go and take a look at some internationals uh, or other regions or something of that nature. Uh, that was the last camp, and so this will actually run our recruiting actions.
All right, let us see what they said. Harley didn't care for it. Williams appreciated it. DeGray didn't care for it. That was the two guard, was was it? It was. So he was top 25, so this was definitely the one that we wanted. And he did not care for the visit whatsoever. So that's pretty disappointing. He would have been a great, uh, great one to bring in. He's still really low. We can leave him on the list and keep calling and see. You know, like you said, Chris, uh, some of these guys end up turning, so I'm not going to pull him off the list or anything. Uh, but we will definitely offer one of these two first. So Lang's defense is supposedly better, but again, with our terrible scouts, it's not enough of a big difference to really do anything for me. They're closely rated in ranking. GPA is going to be fine either way. Uh, the big thing, this one has more interest and you know, his stats are marginally better. So I think our first offer is going to go to Fuller. Let's take a look at the big men again. It's <laughs> looking rough over here. Uh, just seeing any of the stats Stats jump out more than the others. Let's do the same thing here is get one more week of film on these before we go make our offer. And then let's get back over to small forward and take a look. We can also take a look at internationals. Oh, uh, we didn't get the reports. International region. Full recruit list. So... Oh, you know, we don't have any, uh, we got to go clear some room off of our, uh, watch list first. You know, I think we did have another two guard that played well in a camp. Didn't we have the two Joes? Like, he wasn't top 25, but he did well. The two Johns, right? John Scott and somebody else. So he was decent. So here's another one. I mean, he's only six foot. But we can bring him in as well and see if we can generate any interest there. And if we can, uh, there's another possibility for us. And why not go ahead and try it with him? He's 6'5". He can slide over better than the six foot two guard. <laughs> Ron didn't do well, right? Yeah, Ron did well as yeah, let's talk to Ron too. What the heck? We might just be guard heavy, guys. Uh, it could happen. So we got all those visits out now. What do we want to get off? Let's get these guys off our list. We're definitely, if we bring in some guards, it's going to be somebody that we're, excuse me, somebody that we're very much interested in. So any of these guards that we're really interested in, we can hang on to on the list. But like guys like these down here, oh, Samaki Daniels. Do we want to? Yeah, we'll hold on to these three-star guys. Um, get rid of him as well. What a power forward look like. Yeah, we're not. Too awfully interested in you guys, so now we ought to have some room to take a look and see if we can at least add a couple of guys, a couple of the internationals to our list, just to see if we can't get lucky somewhere. Uh, and all we'll be doing for now, you know, Chris said he wouldn't be spending anything on visits. I definitely agree with that. We're just going to add a couple of them to the list, see if we can get anywhere with phone calls, see if we can learn anything about them. Because we're definitely short at small forward. And we'll also take a look and see if we can't get lucky with some kind of halfway decent center. I like this guy out of Finland. You know, he's close to averaging a double-double. None of the other ones look all that great. 
that was uh, my phone's beeping, giving me uh, tracking information on my PC that's supposed to be on the way. So some of the parts are, in theory, going to be here tomorrow. The case isn't supposed to be here until next Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. So we'll see how that ends up actually playing out. Uh, so we added everything we could. Our list is full again. Let's get back to just the call and watch list. All right, so we don't have any film left. We don't have any anything left except for we can make some calls. So let's see if they got any interest. He doesn't. Nothing yet. <laughs> Apparently they haven't heard of Florida A&M in Europe or Australia or any of these countries. <laughs> None of the centers cared to talk to me. Maybe some of the small forwards will. Surely to goodness, there's got to be somebody that just wants to play, right? Like you, We've got playing time, man. I don't have a single small forward on my roster. Any of you guys could walk right in and do big things. Come on. One of you's got to talk to me. I guess I don't have to, but I would like for them to. No, not yet. Oh, we must be out of time. And we are. All right. Well, let's move on to the next week. So we should get our film back on our centers. Uh, we can hold off another week. It's still early in August. <laughs> Hope you're watching something manly on Netflix. And don't get pulled into like Gilmore Girls or something. I say that as somebody who all day long when I'm sitting here trying to work, my wife is upstairs watching Gilmore Girls. All right, so you can see now we have called all of them. Our assistant at least called all of these and none of them have any interest. So we'll just try to get some film on them. We're not going to do any kind of visits whatsoever on any of these guys we'll get some film uh, but it's not looking great for our internationals let's bounce back over take a look at our centers here as far as local guys go uh, Jason Hughes has actually bumped up to three stars he's in the top 150 uh, if you remember we had a recruit that did this previously he jumped up to like 126 and actually was a four star guy for a minute he fell back down and, and he hasn't amounted to anything uh, I think that was I know he's a power forward. I think that was Terrell Wright, and he's done nothing since he got here. So this is probably another fluke. He'll probably fall back down, you know, in stars and in rating. So I'm not getting excited about that guy. Won all regions. I don't know why that disappeared. Uh, so you know, I might bring him in as a lottery ticket, you know, as a guy that might be decent. I'm not impressed at all about his rebounds. Skiffer here actually has better rebounds, and Gary Smith has the most even-ish out of all of them. So uh, let's get a couple more of these guys in. And then let's take a look at our ratings over here, because we did watch more film on them. Uh, Gary has a D, which, I mean, at least it's not an F, I suppose, like most of the rest of these are his athleticism's terrible his scoring's terrible so he's not really good at much of anything our best ratings scout wise actually look like they're coming up here on kevin fields who at least has a b in scoring a c in defense actually the same as hughes does his outside shot's supposedly a little better he's a better free throw shooter better rebounder blocker and better athlete. So overall, uh, not only does Hughes actually have some interest, but his grades look better there. So, I mean, why not? If we're going to offer a center, we might as well go there. And then at small forward, whew, these uh, internationals really took up a lot of, added a whole lot of black over here to this interest column. A whole lot of nothing right in there. 
Yeah, WebStart, watching film on recruits multiple times is supposed to make a difference. So, in theory, the um, the recruiting grade that you're getting, and, and I don't know ex- the exact percentage behind the scenes, but it's supposed to be a mix of like your head coach's ability to, re- to scout, uh, your scouting assistant's ability to scout, and then the amount of exposure your coaches have to the players. So the more they watch film, those ratings can change. If they watch live, they're going to get a more accurate uh, picture of the recruit. If they watch the uh, at a camp, they're going to get a more accurate uh, view of that recruit. So, you know, if you're really trying to get an accurate assessment from your scouts, first of all, I would want to have much better scouts than what I've got right now. Uh, I'm pretty terrible, so even if I watch a lot of times, I still don't have a high degree of certainty with that. But if you have good scouts and you scout, you yeah, do it more than once. Just because you've watched film once and you know, watch film three times, your coaches are going to pick up different things. Go scout them live; it's going to be even better. Uh, so whether that's a camp or you know occasionally you get this scout live option pop up down here, uh, that's gonna that is supposed to give you better ratings. Now, have I sat here? and min maxed it and figured it out and studied it or something no i don't do that but i do know that is how it's supposed to work that's how the game explains that it's supposed to work so in theory yes that is how it should work um I mean, to me i've always i always just try to do the overall view you know the higher the ratings the higher the stats the better they do at the camp uh the better my scouts rate them you know all of that's usually going to match up eventually so uh at at higher schools obviously i'm looking for somebody that's good across the board at a lower school like this you know was this like the 10th time i've said at this episode lottery tickets you know a lot of times we're just taking guesses on these guys so one thing stands out like this guy what was i looking at down here is this no these are my small forwards hold on let's do one thing at a time let me make my other small forward offer real quick so lang is actually this was our other guy that was four star, right? Uh, let's bring in a JUCO and just see if we can't get a well. Try to bring in a JUCO and see if we can't get a starter out of it. Uh, so, you know, if I'm at a small school like this, and you know, all those ratings aren't going to match up. The highest ranked and the best stats and my best scouting, they all tell a different story. We have no idea who's the best. You know, then I'm just trying to take a flyer. Like, okay, this guy had a good camp. Uh, this guy down here. Was a skiffer? No, uh, right here, Gary Smith. You know his. He's got a really low rating. I don't have any information on him from camps. My scouts find him to be average, but you know he's almost averaging a double double. So's Cordell Smith down here. I'll take a flyer. You know if if these guys up here, if we're talking about Othello Lewis, actually he's seven one. That's a bad example. I, sometimes I just like height. Uh, if we're talking about Isaac Yeager. Number 610 two-star guy with 16 points and 7 rebounds a game. Or somebody down here, you know, okay, he's a 1,000 spots lower in the ranking. These guys can move. It, when they're this low, they can change 5, 6, 7, 800 spots in one evaluation. Now, the higher you get, the less movement there is. So, yeah, I got 150, may drop to 250, or may climb to 80 or 90. But, like, the number one recruit isn't dropping to the number 500 recruit. Like, the top recruits are the top recruits. These guys down here, you're splitting hairs. So this ranking doesn't mean as much. If I can find one other thing to make one recruit stand out more, take a guess. You know, odds are they're going to suck, but uh, some of them turn out. You never really know who it's going to be. So we've done everything we can do this week for recruiting. Let's move on. We've got all of our offers out. Uh, so at this point, it's just about bringing as many guys in as we can afford Uh, to see if we can generate other interest out of what's essentially going to be our second options. All of our first options, you know, we brought them all in for visits. Some of them were interested, some of them weren't. We've dealt with that accordingly. Uh, So now we are just scattering out the visits anywhere we can afford them. We're not at all going to spend them on those international guys. But anybody from the states that hasn't visited yet come on down especially if you are a center or a small forward and let's keep collecting the film 
as we've established that that is supposed to make a difference. And then let's get to all the guys. Let me see the visit and scholarships. The cigarette looking icon. Yeah, you're talking about right next to the little school and the little scholarship over here, Chris. Um, hold on, what am I looking at? Why did I bring this guy up? Oh, I wanted to see if I could call and get more information. First, I want to clear out the uh, the interest list on anybody I've offered a scholarship to. Shoot. So, yeah, the little house here in actions, uh, I guess it's the house or a school or something, that shows that they've made an on-campus visit. You've sh surely seen that one. The little hat is they made a scholarship offer. This one right here means that this is a pipeline state. So, uh, and I don't think that it'll actually show up until you're enough years in. So, you're probably not enough years in on a save. Because uh, I've actually had this. It won't just be in state. Uh, when I had my Georgia save going, uh, I actually had Georgia and Kentucky both as pipeline states. And the Kentucky thing was just a coincidence. It wasn't like I was recruiting it any harder. It, it was just generating a bunch of prospects that I kept on landing. So uh, it turned into a pipeline state. So in theory, that's supposed to make it easier to recruit. Now, I guess I haven't double checked to see if it actually changes like the recruiting prices. I think it just affects interest, uh, but I do know, you know, recruiting out of pipeline states is definitely advantageous as opposed to non-pipeline states. So that's probably now that I see that popping up and think about it, uh, that's probably the difference in uh, some of these like kind of higher ranked guys actually having a little bit of interest now is that it's showing up as a pipeline state. Whereas before, they flat out had no interest. Yeah, it would make more sense just for it to be interest, not necessarily price. Uh, but, like I said, I hadn't checked it in the past. And, you know, on this one, with it being in-state, I'm not sure. And actually, no, uh, Chris, the, the pipeline states, and this is another interesting thing, assuming that this is working as intended. I can tell you my experience with it. And I would assume that it's working as intended and actually makes sense to me. The pipeline state is attached to your coach. It is not attached to the school. So like in my Georgia save, when I moved on to Georgetown, you know, that's what Georgetown somewhere up around D.C., right? Uh, I still had Georgia and Kentucky as pipeline states for my coach. So the pipeline state is 100 percent where your coach has experience recruiting. So I can take, you know, I've got this pipe, my pipeline as a coach established at, in Florida now. So I can go to UCLA and UCLA can pull recruits out of Florida. Now, how that works out of region and all of the background information, like I said, I'm not the kind of guy to min max or sit here and do a thousand tests and see exactly how it works. But I can tell you that pipeline has followed me as a coach in the past. So in theory, I should be able to go anywhere in the country and pull states, uh, pull recruits out of Florida better than I would be able to if I didn't have Florida set up as a pipeline. And I do not know how many recruits exactly you have to have recruited to establish that pipeline or how many you have to have to maintain it. But I do know that's what the indicator means. Uh, so I've got some information. I don't have all of the answers. But that's my experience with pipelines. All right, so moving on, we're getting close, guys. We're toward the end of August now. Uh, let's see if we got some more small forwards we need to get in. Small forwards from this country, preferably. Uh, here's one that's jumped up in the rankings a bit. Bring him in. Internationals, already visited. Here's one. And Rick Shine. And we will throw some more film into our in-state guys. So I do not have much hope on the internationals at this point. Uh, but never know. You know, anything can happen. 
Let's continue trying to unlock these pitch areas on the guys that we've offered. God. So frustrating. Cannot wait. That's the main reason I want that recruiting skill to go up. I mean, I guess the main reason is so I land better recruits, but the second main reason is so when I get here, it quits hanging up on me. <laughs> so annoying to me. Let's go check out the center. Oh, let's check out. We still had... All right, DeGray never had interest, and John Scott visited and didn't have any interest, so that didn't work out either. Look at this. Hey, I I'm telling you, this will end up being the best shooting guard uh, out of here, and he just has no interest. One star outside of the top 1,500 almost. It's crazy to me. Meanwhile, this guy's four star, almost in the top 100. Hard-working kid. You know, and that's another thing, you know, if you're going through... Uh, that's just one more thing when I talk about looking at stats, looking at ratings, all that sort of thing. Look at those coach notes. If you get the hardworking kid or tremendous work ethic or something like that, uh, those are guys that are supposed to be able to be more likely to develop. And nothing is a guarantee, but when you're talking about recruiting at, at this kind of level, you just got to take all of the information that you can possibly get, you know. Ah, so look, Gonzaga might still be all right. They got the number one Norton candidate. Louisville and Kentucky both representing in the top six. Only uh, one of them in the top five. Enjoyed it. Blah, blah, blah. All right. All right. We've got about two weeks left, and then we're getting in-home recruiting, which is always where the fireworks begin and end mostly. After that, you're just sort of like, if you haven't got them, filled up by that point just randomly like oh hey i decided to come to your school like oh thanks forgot i offered you man once we get into the games man it's going to be all about winning some games uh, making some noise in the conference tournament this year i know i've been saying it three years in a row now i think we're finally i think we finally got a roster where i feel real good about three if not four players that highly rated transfer guy is the only one I'm not sold on. Griffin's already proven it on the court. You know, the other two were good enough with the camps and all that. Uh, I feel fine with them, that being our, our inside guys. So we've almost got everything unlocked. Do we need... No, we're good. So plow ahead. So we get through August and then, I guess, September... September is all the in-homes, and then once we get to the end of October, we're pretty much going to be simulated right up to the game. So we're not quite at an hour yet. This will be, you know, all the recruiting streams seem to go about an hour 15, hour and a half, just depending on uh, how much I run my jaws while we're going through it. So one more chance to unlock this guy. Who We just have one more. Okay. Let's go double check the small forwards. I'm almost certain I've got one of them unlocked and not all of the other one. Right? Or do I have all both of them? No, I need one more on nickel. Let me go ahead and ask them about their parents now. Till they hang up on us. <laughs> oh, do we have any more small forwards to bring in for visits? None of the internationals. No, no, no. Bringing some of these guys. Not costing us much. Actually, we still got $9,200. Maybe, maybe we give it a shot on an international. I'm not going for a 2.1 GPA guy with no interest. That's kind of scary to me. Uh, let's not do that until we get turned down. Let's see how these scholarship offers go. You know, We can always save that budget for later in the year. You never know... Uh, how an entire season of calls and you know a second, even a third contact period is going to go. So I'll hold on to the money a little bit. Uh, let's just stop it right there and get right to the end homes. We'll have to skip through one more week, but uh, I'm done with what I want to do from there. All right, guys. If you're still watching the stream, 
you got to have a little bit of interest in this. Do me a favor. Cross some fingers. Cross your toes. Cross whatever you've got. Uh, We need some recruiting love out on the trail once we start making these in-home visits. It's time to get excited. uh, And time to... What is this? Fuller back up to a four-star. Back up into the top 100. Still not in his top 10. That's all right. That's all right. Uh... Yeah, the closer. <laughs> hey, he's getting closer, man. He, he's up to about 50 now. Right? Is it... I haven't even looked yet. There's old Rick Shine. He didn't care for it. What's our recruiting at? He's a 48, so, I mean, he's... He's getting there. You know, he'll be there eventually. Uh, so... I don't know if I'll call him the closer yet. He might be the setup guy. Trying to pose as a closer for now. We're going to go ahead and skip it. Get right to these visits. Let's get a bit of liquid courage going. Come on, guys. Fort A&M is a wonderful uh, educational institution. So... Here is target number one, Fuller. We're going to go, we could go location, but let's actually go playing time. I doubt there's too many other schools that are going after him that don't have a single. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we're going to loosen up the wallet a little bit. That's absolutely right. There can't be that many other schools going after him that have no scholarship small forwards on the roster. So uh, let's give that a go. Nickel is purely in it for the location. Bounce over to the centers. Here's our boy. And he also wants to hear about location. Which is fine by me. And then I'm going to head back over and you know just give... DeGray was 25th, right? Top 25 at Memphis. That's not, that's not easy. He's... I don't care what they rank him. If he was one of the best 25 players, so say that evaluation's wrong, he's still one of the best 50 recruits in this entire region. So, you know, maybe if you're at you know, Louisville and Duke and North Carolina, that doesn't mean a lot, but one of the 50 best recruits in the region is probably one of the best 300 players in the country. That means a lot coming into a school like this. So uh, we don't have any information on him, but we're going to go by and talk about location a little bit. See if we can't warm him up. If we can't, you know, it only costs us 125 bucks. So, what do you say, boys? Would anyone like to be a rattler? Come on. Let's make it happen. Let's bring in that small forward. All I can really hope for is that I'm not making it worse the way that I used to. Oh, look. Fuller's already made a decision. We impressed him with the in-home visit. He wants to be on the court with us. Could it be? (laughs) I think that's our our first top 100 recruit, guys. Let's let's jump over and check. All right, so DeGray still wasn't impressed. He didn't care for it. Hughes liked it. Nickel thought it went well. Let's take a look at this, guys. See if this ranking holds. See if it holds. Number 90 in the country. That's a top 100 recruit headed to Florida A&M. You know? I mean, (laughs) I don't know what to say. That's got to be a first. That's got to be a first. Whew, that feels good. So even even if the ratings off, even if the stars are off, you know you still got to figure. You know he's a top. Like we were just saying, he's got to be a top 300 player in the nation. Still, you know it's not going to be that off. Now once you get down to 80, 90, yeah, they could drop down to 200, 250. Uh, plenty of these type of recruits are going to wash out, especially at bigger schools. But at a school like this, that's a get. That's a good good commitment.
I, I don't have any idea why DeGray... I mean, look, he's a one-star guy outside the top thousand with just no interest. It's bizarre to me. Uh, I mean, not totally, because I think he's talent. He's, I think he's talented enough to go to a, a you know, more of a mid-major program. Like, a, I mean, he's in the southeast, so I, I don't guess I mean mid-major. I guess I mean like lower P5. If I was like Arkansas or South Carolina or something, I'd be all over that guy. And I bet, you know, he could end up at a school like that, or uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the kind of bigger Florida schools, Central Florida, South Florida, something like that. Yeah, let's see here. You're talking about Fuller? Two, yeah, Fuller. Yeah, two assists a game, you know, not terrible. Uh, it's definitely on the high end out of all the small forwards on our list. Um, so, yeah, he could. We are pretty, I think we've got, even next year, I think we'll still have six scholarship guards on the roster. So, assuming that uh, you know, Villarreal works out at all we've already got griffin uh you saw the the rating that our other point guard just showed up with so i don't know if that'll hold or not but it looks like we should should have a good three guard rotation uh let's go ahead and move forward here we're gonna keep on nickel we've moved up to fourth on his list so obviously talking about location worked out for us uh is there another small forward that we want to go and talk to right now Double down on our four-star top hundred guys. <laughs> we haven't had that many sips yet, Chris. Let's get over here and make sure we've got one small forward coming in. Let's make sure we at least get one center as well. We're up to fifth on his list. Um, out of Finland. Whew. Looking for these guys. Like I said, he. He's close to an average in a double double. So is Skiffer. So is Smith, but he doesn't have any kind of interest. God, if we don't land Hughes, man, the the centers. Not that he's excellent, but the, there's we don't have a lot of good options here. We don't have a lot of good options here. Uh, let's just save this money because if we don't, if it doesn't work out, we might just need to see how the season unfolds. Uh, so yeah, we still have two recruiting visits left, uh, but I don't want to. I just don't want to spend the money right now. So it's oh, we're gonna have to get a. Uh, yeah, I'm just not getting outside of the area yet. Uh, you gotta keep in mind our prestige is four. You know, if we get outside of the state, look at that. I think the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven home games to six away games. So this is at least much more doable than what we got stuck with last year. You know, going from you know, nine out of thirteen on the road to six versus seven. And seven being the home games, oh, that's huge. That's, you know, if you just win the home games and lose the road games, which is exactly what we did last year, that's three extra wins. All right, so that's good. Yeah, midseason, I mean, we can always stretch out a little bit. We can call some of those guys that uh, commit elsewhere, open up our list a little bit, and, and add to it a little bit out of state if we need to, especially if these guys don't come through. But, First of all, New Hampshire Wildcats. Oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, let's just look. We landed use. And we only had, look, we only had, we had two visits that we made. We don't have any scholarships available. And we got four emails. So, to me, that's the results of two in-home visits one decision that's that's two decisions right so if we don't have an open scholarship and we got two decisions over here i, I don't want to hear that nonsense justin Louisville's gonna Louisville's gonna beat you down in the ncba this year buddy now next year i already called it like next year i got to have 
uh, either my shooting guard or center. Like one of them's got to come back, or next year it might be a little bit of a rebuild. But let's see what we get here. It's gonna be two decisions. We got them both, right? Nichols coming in, Hughes is coming in. God, that's the first time we actually landed. We only offered three guys, and we landed all three of them. So we're making moves over here at Florida A&M, guys. Let's take a look at this recruiting class. Love it. Four-star, top 100 guy. Our other two, you know, the lowest-rated recruit we have as of right now, and these could still change, but the lowest-rated recruit we got at Florida A&M with four prestige. 364th in the nation, three-star, 50th best center. Uh, I think that's a good recruiting haul. It's at four. Let's go jump over here and make sure we didn't get a surprise bounce. Yeah, team prestige four, conference prestige 11. And then uh, let me also show off my coach because he has recruiting of 48. Yeah. It's not pretty. <laughs> but uh, the tide is 100% turning. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to get in here. Excuse me. I'm going to try to get in here tomorrow or Saturday, uh, hopefully in the next couple of days, and get this season played out. I would love. No, it doesn't hurt to say, man, it's Florida a and I started off with an absolutely terrible coach at Florida a and uh, Somebody told me I might have actually cut a couple players on the first day. I don't remember it. Uh they, they might be right. Uh, but I mean, you can see what the record has been so far. Uh, it's been tough sledding. We've also uh, lost some of our best players. One of our best guards left right away uh, to transfer, not like graduated. Uh, so, you know, we haven't had the best of luck in the first couple of years. But last episode, things really turned around when Knox committed. Uh, this episode, we landed three out of three, and uh, one of them's in the top 100. So, things are looking up over here. A quick look at our practice plan. So, we're going 60-40 between Princeton and Triangle. You know, we're a smaller school. I expect to have a little bit uh, more coaches who are a little bit, I'm sorry, players that are a little bit more coached up. So, we're, we are going to be running some Princeton, and then we stick with that Triangle. Uh, it was... Motion and triangle are traditionally the offenses I like to run, and they weren't running motion when I got here, but they were already running triangle, so we just stuck with that one. Uh, the offensive sets, you can see them right here in the usage. So it's 60% Princeton, 40% triangle. My offensive set usage, though, I believe is it's around 60, 50. Uh, we are, that will go up as these guys get better at both these offenses. And we'll take another look at this before the season actually starts. Uh, I mean, you can see Mike Stewart, I don't know why his rating is so good. I mean, if he's that good, that'd be awesome. I'd love to have it. I don't... I mean, he was the fifth 500th ranked recruit. I don't remember him standing out or being particularly excited about him. Uh, so, no, we're actually not doing great at keeping players. That's the plan at this school. Uh, but it hasn't been going great. We've been having guys transfer out left and right. But I mean, you can see all the frowny faces here. We're hoping that that turns around with some wins because usually it's either playing time or bad attitude that makes players recruit uh, transfer out. And in this save, like I've had guys that have good attitudes and they're getting tons of playing time and they're still transferring out. So I've I've got to think there's something else going on with it and. The only other thing I can think of is, is team success and the lack of team success that we've been having so far. Uh, so this is definitely uh, the season where that team success is going to start to trend in the right direction. You know, we're, we got seven out of uh, 13 out-of-conference games at home this year. I expect to win at least six of them, if not all seven. Uh, you know, and we might pick up a – a road and, and drop a home game. But out of that out-of-conference schedule, I think six wins is very doable. And then we pick up eight in the conference. We're sitting at 14 wins, you know, and then a, a tournament win or two gets us up over 15. Uh, here's our out-of-conference schedule. You know, we did go to the AD last year. We had nine road games out of 13 out-of-conference. Uh, it was brutal. So... I think we actually started out like 
four and two or something. It was looking good and then went downhill quick. Uh, so this year we actually did call the athletic director and ask for some cupcakes at home. This is what they delivered to us. Uh, so you can see here, start off with a nice little home stand, then mix in some road games before we get down here and start in on our conference games, uh, beginning with Maryland Eastern Shore. So no ranked teams, not even any Power 5 schools. These are all small schools. We should have a chance in every game, uh, but definitely we've got a chance in all the, the home games. Uh, so like Griffin last year, can we look real quick? So you can see here, as a freshman, Griffin came in completely unheralded, and he was starting playing almost 30 minutes a game and giving us 14 points a game. He led the team in scoring as a freshman. Uh, he also, he was actually, we had a senior point guard, and that guy was terrible. So Griffin, as a true freshman, was actually running point and still had a fairly respectable assist-to-turnover ratio. I mean, closer to one-to-one -one than I would like out of a point guard, but for a unheralded freshman I would definitely take it uh, so there's absolutely no way around it he is our starting point guard I don't care what this guy's rated at now we get a 10-15 games into the season and this guy's making moves sure uh, things can change Villarreal is a transfer uh, was he a transfer yeah Villarreal was a transfer that we brought in uh, he's pretty highly rated so We'll give that rating a little bit more credence than this one just because this guy's already had some college competition. So we've got, regardless, I think we've got three decent guards. Uh, Frederick Dixon actually also started last year when that senior point guard was playing so horribly. So uh, I've got faith in him. He can come in and get some minutes. Small forward, we don't have anything but walk-ons. Uh, so that actually may hurt our, hurt our depth here. We may we may slide. Villarreal is only 6-1. Uh, we may slide a power forward down, actually. Uh, one of these juniors or seniors. Both of these guys, uh, Terrell Wright was actually ranked in the top 150 at one point during recruiting. He hasn't panned out. I didn't think that I wasn't particularly excited about him. Uh, so he may slide down into the three. Khalid Knox I'm very excited about. Craig Montgomery, you can see what he did last year. He was playing 23 minutes a game, 13 uh, points a game over five rebounds a game and we had we did have another big man that was grabbing quite a few boards last year so i expect his rebounds are definitely going to pick up hopefully the points pick up a little bit as well uh, but we got four maybe five guys that i'm really comfortable with right now whereas last year you know we had two so i've got a whole lot of expectations yeah the sets were at 50 percent last year because we were starting, we had a senior center that I was playing at power forward. And then uh, Montgomery and Griffin were both in the starting lineup to begin with. We also had a senior, we had a senior small forward. Uh, so we had the senior small forward, the senior center playing power forward. And then freshman center, freshman Griffin started out at the two, eventually moved over to the one when we benched that terrible point guard and put Dixon in so for most of the season we were starting tr three true freshmen that's why we had it so low uh, and it'll probably let's see if we go sophomore it'll depend on what the starting lineup really becomes here let's let's simulate up to the beginning of the season until we get our first scouting reports then we'll jump over and work the depth chart and, and set our percentages and all that good stuff before we cut out here so we're still only about an hour and 15 into this you know, we're not running three hours or anything tonight. We'll wrap this up shortly, but uh, let's get it up to the games and let's take one last look at you know, how the freshmen and sophomores that are going to be seeing some playing time, how they've developed, how they've learned our sets, and, and we can get the minutes squared away so we see what our lineup's actually going to look like going into this fifth season, which is the year it all changes, guys. Uh, at this school, I probably won't introduce the motion. At this school... I'm going to hope that as the winds pick up, the transfers drop off. So we'll see some of these guys sticking around. And hopefully we'll be able to see that as this season plays out. Hopefully you know, guys like Montgomery and Griffin, who are starting, who have decent attitudes. Oh, actually, Montgomery's attitude sucks. But at least a guy like Griffin, 
who's got a good attitude. He's getting a ton of playing time. Hopefully we'll see their mood improving. If that happens and we think we're going to keep these guys around in two, three and four years going forward, uh, you know, we'll probably just stick with that Princeton. And then I'll work motion in, uh, you know, when I move on to another school. But if I'm at a school this tiny, to me, that's what the Princeton offense is meant for is a tiny school like this that's got to rely on you know, three- and four-year players. Although it probably also to some degree uh, would help if my coach could halfway coach offense or defense. Because I showed you his recruiting rankings at 48. Uh, that's his best rating. Everything else is worse. I think scouting is significantly worse. Um, offense and defense aren't too far behind. Probably low to mid 40s. But you have the 48 recruiting's the absolute best skill that he's got. So that's a little bit scary. All right, let's check it out. These might actually be our scouting reports and our red shirt reminder. So here we go. All right, Justin, uh, take care of the sim, and I'll jump on and steal all your recruits later, buddy. Uh, let us jump in and see where these ratings are. So a freshman, you know, he's up to almost 30s. Sophomores getting close to 50 there. Dixon is lagging a little bit behind because Griffin, probably because Griffin got a significant amount of playing time. So Villarreal is really learning that Princeton. He might have been running that somewhere else, which is a good thing for us. Hinton is a senior. He's got it down. Khalid Knox in the low 20s. Montgomery up around the 40s, which is that around, is that the same as, Dixon was actually, or Griffin rather, was actually about 10 points higher. So let's take a look at what the computer says to do. If we let the computer do it, that's almost exactly what I would have done, except for I'm starting Khalid Knox. We'll move Stewart up. Point guard, center, power forward, shooting guard. Uh, let's let the AI suggest a matrix for that. And what we're actually going to do here. Guard. Just get this dude out of there. Bring him in there so that White is playing it here. Hit our only backup big man off the garbage time squad. All right, I think I like that. Uh, so we got sophomore, sophomore, senior, freshman, sophomore. So a couple of 40s. So 20. You know, I think strategy wise, uh, 50, 60 percent is probably all right we'll bump it up a little uh, just because you know those ratings will go up throughout the year so we'll bump it up a little bit but um i, I don't want to jack it up too high we're still playing a freshman and, and two sophomores in there um so that's it guys we're ready to play games i'm gonna go ahead and save it right here cut off the stream i really appreciate you guys stopping by make sure that uh, you're followed or subscribed or whatever you got to do so you get noticed when we go back live again because next time we go live this is going to be the season where Florida A&M goes off. Uh, if it's not, I'll cry. So one way or another, you're getting an interesting stream. But, uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys dropping by. Uh, 
hope you had a great time and I'll see you next time.